actually in competition with Minister Duma next door. We have an alibi for why we're here. I'm not sure about you. You're going to have to make that explanation for yourself. I get to do the, the interesting bit of this talk and then Alex gets to do the really interesting bit. Um, but I want to talk to you briefly today about Kumul Petroleum. Many of you will know about Kumul Petroleum and will know perhaps the first part of what I'm going to say. The second part probably just tells you a little bit more about where we're at um, as an organisation and what we're doing. But many of you will know. Many of you will know that um, Kumul Petroleum is uh, PNG's national oil company, national petroleum company, and the state nominee in petroleum projects in PNG. That means it's something that's been mandated in the Kumul Petroleum Act, and we've been uh, under that act. We are mandated to participate in petroleum exploration, appraisal, development, production, processing, and marketing. Uh, Many people may not think that that's our, you know, understand our full remit, but that's our full remit under the Kumul Petroleum Act. And of course, in this section today, we're going to be focusing on exploration. And so that's uh, the part that Alex will be doing. But our vision as Kumul is to build the nation through the energy resources of PNG. And we do that in lots of ways. Probably the most visible way is what you see in the top left here is handing over checks. Uh, we do that to the government and we do that to various organisations uh, around PNG. Uh, you know, both, so we, we contribute to the government and we contribute directly to things like health, education, community development, uh, sporting support and many other things that we sponsor. But we do that through our participation in petroleum projects. And you know, our flagship project, what really brought things to, to a head was PNG LNG. Uh, and we started in that space but, and have, have a 16.5% um, interest at this stage with 2.6% coming very, very soon um, in that space. And of course, um, Papua LNG is coming our, um, our way as well. We'll take a 20% stake in that. And these are the big value drivers. But we're also participants in other exploration licenses. Today, we're going to focus on those licenses that we own and operate. But just to say very briefly, um, we have made an, a transition in the last couple of years. In 2021, we became an operator wow. of four blocks. And so as part of that, we've actually had to move as an organisation and develop. Until then, we were a passive participant, and now we're building an operating organisation. And so what does that look like for us right now? Uh, we have 35 people in our operations department. The organisation's 110 people, um, almost entirely national. I'm a, I'm a rare beast in Kumul Petroleum. Um, I think there are three people on staff who are expat, the rest are nationals, and it's great to have some of our team here today. And we're building our people and our processes and our tools to become that operator. We really appreciate the support of our partners. There are many of them who are helping us uh, as we make that transition, and we're very appreciative of the support we get from our joint venture partners. But when we say we're building the nation, perhaps the most important thing we're trying to do is actually build and develop our people, because that is the future of our organisation. And so we're building our culture, we're building our capability through developing our staff, and we're building capacity through increasing the numbers so that we can actually deal with uh, the work that's in front of us. And so to hear, to tell you a little bit more about that work that's in front of us, I'm going to hand over to Alex. Thank you, Craig. Um, morning, all. I will give you an update on the, um, the four petroleum retention licenses that we own and operate. Um, Papua Nini, uh, sorry, Kumul Petroleum, as you know, became a petroleum operator when it acquired those licenses in 2021. And that was a game changer in PNG's history since the first well was drilled in Bailala in 1911, as you know. Now, those licenses that we operate, sorry, um, our PRL um, 47, which is the P Pandora, PRL 48 and 49, that's Barikewa and Kimu, they are onshore. I think I got a laser here. So this is uh, 
Pandora, and we've got the Uramu field here, and the Barikewa field, and the Kimu field. As you can see, three of those licenses are within ex almost close to existing infrastructure. Now, Barikewa is probably one of the oldest well. That was discovered in 1959. It's been 64 years since then. And these licenses are operated by various uh, operators throughout the life of those um, since uh, that those were discovered. Now, those licenses, they contain um, stranded gas, as you'd call it at the time. And at the time, we could not develop those, and they've been sitting in the ground simply because they were smaller in size, but also there were no market available, as well as there was no infrastructure. As you know, a lot of exciting things are happening, so we need to get in on the act. A lot of people also ask me, why? Why Kumul Petroleum has acquired those petroleum licenses? The thing about Kumul is that we are in a unique position. As the state-owned company is well-placed to commercializing those stranded gas resources in a more aggregated gas development way. And unlike other previous operators, they were driven by their own business agendas and their shareholders' requirements, and they were all operating those licenses individually. But Kumul, in an aggregated approach, we feel that we, we offer that solution in that space. Now, you've got to remember, those are marginal fields. Now, as I said, uh, we are heading into an era of maturing gas development within the Papuan Basin itself. We've got PNG LNG online, we got Papua LNG coming on, and we got Pinyang LNG, and we got a lot of exciting three Ws that we hear from ExxonMobil that is going on. There's going to be a flurry of infrastructure that's going to go in, and it's going to unlock the potential for a couple of those, of those marginal fields. And we are in the right time to do it, because you've seen ExxonMobil's presentation. In the last events, you've seen that they are planning up to 2050, 2060, so we, we, are, we are in that space. And though some of those markets did not exist 20 years ago, so we are in that space. Now, those fields, as I said, within close proximity, we are excited about it, and they contain enough gas resource to supply to our proposed Kumu Petroleum E-LNG train. And we are really happy about that, and we've got enough resource to do that. And we have approximately 2.5 TCF of gas resource from those licenses to supply the PNG, uh, to supply the Kumul LNG train. And hopefully we got other licenses as well that we are a, a minor partner in, and we can probably um, uh, bring those in at a later stage. Now, what we have done since we got the license the first few months, we were hampered by COVID. As you know, all of us were hampered. But after that, we got ourselves together, as Craig said, got all our resources, all our people together. And in the last 18 months or so, we have conducted field evaluations for all those four fields. So what we have done was we studied the data to understand the data gaps that we have. And we went on to doing geophysical <coughs> evaluations to understand what sort of gross rock volume we are talking about here so that we can also and then decide to build detailed geological model where we understand the properties of those reservoirs very well, what we can do to improve those um, uh, this in-place volumes so we can take them up to a resource to 1C, 2C, and later to a 1P, 2P where we can develop them. And this, all this work was done, and we take them to a simulation model where we started analyzing development scenarios and, 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 and doing all that. And this work was done by Kumul in-house team, as well as technical experts, some of the best in the business, we got them to help us. And as a result of that, as Craig said, we develop our in-house capability, skills, and the state-of-the-art software, state software that the industry uses as well. And, and that's where our team is heading. Because we want to give confidence to the people of Papua New Guinea that we, as a national oil company, we can build our technical resource and deliver and be in partnership with other IOCs that are coming in, they can have confidence in us, and we can do that and work in partnership together. So that's what we are doing. As part of the workflow process, we learn as we go along. And earlier this year, we got an in, in, uh, international um, independent resource uh, certification team in to work on our resource certification. So we get confidence to our investors and those who come and partner with us for those. And we have done that. We've got three of our fields 
three of our fields are uh, certified already as of this month, and we got one more to go. So Barikewa, Kimu, Uramu, those are certified. And we understand and we are confident with the numbers we have, and now we are working on, on Pandora to get those certified. Now, while that was happening, in parallel, we did the um, assess phase work, where we said, we're going to look wide, right? We got all these amazing opportunities in front of us. So we look wider and we say, how do we best develop this field? We have challenges. It's not easy, ladies and gentlemen. It's not easy. It's a tough road. So what we have done is we looked wider. We got about 162 different combinations and scenarios that you could develop this field. And that's crazy, right? So we had to funnel in, work in, and it is crazy. Craig beats me up all the time. Hey, man, Alex, where you at with your team? So, you know, I'm losing here overnight, but that's okay, because we're doing it for the country, right? <laughs> yeah. So we are narrowing it down to three or four development options where we can commercialize those fields. And now we are almost right at the end where in the assess phase, so what we've done, remember, Kumo, we do not have a system, so we decided to borrow the best in the business shell system so we can work with it. So, so now we are passing on to, we're going to move on to select phase, where we take those three or four different options, and we're going to look at each one of them in detail study over the next 12 months, which I'm proud to say my good countryman, Killer PD, is leading the next stage for the select phase. He's sitting right up here. Please talk to him after this and say, what are you doing in the select phase? There is some exciting fireworks going on. Now, in the select phase, what we have done is we've taken an industry software called PetroVR, where we model all the fields, all the pipeline network, all the processing facilities, and all our strategic pipelines are all put in and in line with all the other projects that are on, and we are we are doing it. It's not like back in the day, in my days, where I used to do Excel spreadsheet. These young guys are really smart these days. So we are doing that so we can understand those different, um, different um, options. Now, I better run because I might run out of time. It's getting good, but, you know, I'll tell you all the other stories later. Now, I want to tell you the exciting bit now. We are doing um, uh, seismic. Now, the first seismic was done probably 64, 65 five years ago, the Puri Seismic by BP. Now, this is exciting for NOC because we are now going to shoot 80 kilometers of seismic lines. And that is a giant leap in itself. For a Papua New Guinea company to enter that space, we are maturing in our thought process and approach to petroleum industry. Hopefully, the Greenies do not kick us out. Now, that's, a, that's an amazing story in itself. And um, look, we are doing a lot of great stuff. After seismic operations, we'll be looking for, for credible investment partners and credible people in the industry to come and partner with us. It may be marginal, but you partner with us, Kumu, we go a long way. So please do talk to us, talk to our executive team, talk to Craig, talk to Wapu, and say, we are excited by what we are hearing. We would like to be part of you. Please do talk to them. I heard you. Now, this is an historic, I, I love this photo. That's because it's an historic, stop, uh, historic step for Kumul Petroleum. So what we have done is we have gone out, getting our boots dirty, getting out on the ground, and doing our first uh, scouting for our seismic lines. And I'm so excited and proud. As a fellow Papuanian, as one of the first few petroleum engineers, I'm really proud that we are heading that way in my lifetime, and I'm so happy, and I'm proud to say that. So... So that in itself is a PNG story, maturing oil and gas. I'm repeating that again because it's amazing, and it's truly amazing. So that's good. And um, what we are doing instead is I want to leave you with this, um, with this photo. It shows this is our 2003 graduates, and we'll be going out after some of the best graduates. So please, those uh, ExxonMobil and Total, please do not steal the best graduates before us. <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> I want to say, but look, talk to us. Feel free. In the ENP space, we are your partner. We, we love to talk to you about all that good technical stuff. So f please feel free. We leave our cards down at the booth. We sit our booth down there and talk to us. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs>